so I am now uh, in a bus to the city called Chiski Budiovis, which is the which is the like birthplace of Budweiser beer. So I am trying to go to the uh, brewery and uh, if possible do a brewery, um, brewery tour. It's a two, but I think I'll miss that. Uh, but in any case, I can have um, the Budweiser beer from the, their factory. So that's very really exciting. So let's see. Výšletého autobusu společnosti Regiočet na pravidelné lince z Českého Krumlova do Prahy se zastávkami v Českých Budějovicích a Písku. Mě jmenuje Martina a budu se o vás starat v průběhu celé cesty. So finally reached the city Chesky Budiovis, but it's already 1.40 and uh, the tour for the beauty starts at 2, so I'm definitely going to miss that. But uh, yes, I can maybe have the beer, see the city a bit and then go. But one thing I noticed here is like the city still has a lot of Soviet feel. Uh, Chesky, Krumlov or Prague don't have that feel and this city looks like uh, it has a Soviet feel. Let me see if my camera can capture this. The trains. Uh, the trains in Czech Republic are really nice because uh, when first time two years back when I took that train from Prague to Kutnara, I really experienced that uh, uh, they have windows which can be open, which is something uncommon in uh, Europe. So, so you can find old trains to these small small cities from Prague, and uh, they have wooden wooden windows, and you can open it and uh, poke your head outside, but just be careful. I think I have to press some button here. Okay. So I hope um, I'll have something good to see in the factory. And I hope I will get some cold beer. Okay, so this road also goes to Prague, Pilsen and Bruno. Let me see. So Pilsen is another city, probably I'll go after two days. So this is the Pilsen is the birthplace of um, Pilsner beer. So it is also very nice. And Bruno is also a big capital. Not capital, but it's a big city in the little bit towards west or east, I think, of Prague. Because Prague is divided into three regions. I think one is called Bohemia, and Ostrava, and Marovia, or something like that. Uh, I forgot. But here it is. This road also goes to Praha, Rizan, and Bruno. So it seems there is no bus or either, I don't know, maybe people are not aware, but I am kind of walking in a main road, like highway, and I have to walk three kilometers before I reach this uh, visiting center of this uh, brewery. Ah, here goes the train. Oh no, just half the train. But the city looks very calm, very silent some random graffiti by the youngsters here. I could not walk anymore on the highway because there was no place for pedestrians. I think it was like more like expressway. So I choose this. This is more nature, more houses. Old buildings. No, these are the new buildings, but it's like old structure. Nice. So, in search for the original Budweiser, Budwar. to 
Du, 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 du. Okay. Walking alone on an industrial area. Ah, I think I see the factory is there. But why there? Okay. I think this is more like industrial area. And I just have to walk. It's another two kilometers, I think. Okay. I think there are buses available, I just couldn't figure out. Here is the bus going, number two. I would have taken this bus and maybe reach on time. And uh, what's the time now, by the way? 2.30, so I, it took me 30 minutes to walk this three kilometers, two and a half, three kilometers. And I'm now in front of the original Budweiser factory. Okay, it's green, this one. Let me go and check if I can still do it. Let's go inside the Budweiser uh, bar and see what they have. There's the Budweiser bar. Let me check the menu. Okay. They also have food. Okay, let's go and check. This looks fancy. So here is the thing, so I, I, I read here, but uh, the tour in English is, um, I cannot do that. So the plan is I will do the tour in Czech and uh, they will give me English translation in text. And here is the store. They have nice glasses and nice t-shirts. Nice. Maybe I'll buy some t-shirts here. But let's see. And also Budweiser has dark beer. I didn't knew that. Budweiser also makes dark beer. I, I never knew that. Dark beer? Yeah. It's a dark beer? Yeah. And here. It's dark beer. Okay. Do you have the big in dark? Yes. Yeah. Maybe you can give me dark one. I'll give okay. pay you five. It's 30 and that's 35. So inside the Budweiser Museum. So, yeah. So they gave me this Budweiser dark. I never knew that Budweiser also makes dark beer. And uh, an English translation of the tour. My tour starts in another 10 minutes and it will be in Czech, but it's okay. I miss the English one. Ah, nice wagon. And what is this cigar? Technology and the brewing industry. Check girl serving beers. Ah, look at this. So all all different kind of uh, Budweiser. Budweiser, Budweiser, Budweiser. So I'm going to try Budweiser dark in Budweiser factory. And let's see how it is. I never tried Budweiser dark. Good.
when the communists take uh, power, took power here uh, in 1948, uh, it was nationalized and uh, it wasn't returned to to the original owners after revolution in 1989. Uh, so this is still state-owned. This is the only actually uh, brewery in this country owned by the by the state. Right. And then there is a secondary brand, it's Pardal. It's only for the Czech market, you can buy it only here in the Czech Republic. Uh, the reason for doing Pardal is that Czech people say uh, Budvar is a very sweet beer. So they made Pardal. Pardal is a kind of a bitter version of Budvar. So we have uh, non alcoholic Budvar, uh, 10 degrees Budvar, 16 degrees Budvar, uh, dark, dark beer, uh, 12 degrees Budvar, cherry Budvar. And that's, that's all. And then three types of pardal. Pardal is 11 degrees. So we are traditional uh, brewery, so every bottle you buy in the world comes from this place. We don't have any other breweries like many bigger companies. And we have only about 400 employees because the process of the brewing is mainly automatic. There are no people in the, in the almost no people in the process. So that's why we have only this ingredients for brewing beer, uh, water, malt and hops. Uh, we will start with the, with the water. Uh, many breweries are built uh, near, near uh, the unique sources of, of the water because the water gives a lot of taste into the beer. So uh, we have also our own unique uh, source. 300 meters under, under the ground there's a big lake around the whole city. Uh, it's an ice lake uh, from the last ice age about 10,000 years ago and uh, the water there is very clear and uh, very very good so it's under natural pressure it goes up naturally without any pump about 40 liters per second so uh, this is the only source here in this area we don't need we don't need uh, uh, two of them or more uh, we need about four liters of water for brewing one liter of beer, of beer. So about 2.5 million liters of water every day. So 40 liters per second uh, are enough. Uh, we don't use any chemicals, and uh, they are uh, quite quite small right now. But at the beginning of the summer, they will be around around this tall. Uh, they grow they grow pretty pretty quickly. Uh, this is only showcase for the uh, for tourists. But we import hops from Žatec. It's a famous farm here in the middle Europe. Uh, they have a special kind of hops there, they have a red hops. Uh, it's called red not because uh, of the color of the plant but uh, they have a special kind of soil there. It contains a lot of iron so, so it has red color, that's why they call the hops red. It has a very very special taste, it's a, one of the best hops in, the, in, the, in the Europe and in the world. So, uh, hops plant uh, can be male or female. Uh, for brewing beer, we use uh, only female plants. So, uh, because the cones of the female plants contains kind of a yellow powder, and uh, this yellow powder is a source of the bitter taste for the for the beer. So that's why we are using only female plants. How do uh, you know uh, which is which? Uh, they, the male, male plant, male plants don't have. Uh, uh, they have smaller cones and uh, you, you can tell by the yellow powder inside the cone. Mm -hmm. So they collect uh, the cone, the cones, they dry it, they dry them and they press them into kind of desks. And those desks uh, they import it here and uh, we, we uh, put it straight like into the beer. About uh, 240 grams in one hectoliter of beer, but it depends on the kind, on the kind of a beer. Uh, for example, Pardal is more bitter. There is more, more hops. It means more hops means more bitter, more bitter taste for the beer. <laughs> or wheat. Uh, in Europe, we use mainly barley for brewing beers, and uh, we import it from Moravia. It's another part of this country, and. Uh, it's, uh, it's already done malt uh, because 
they collect the barley from the field, they wet it for, for a couple days and then they dry it for a couple weeks. Uh, they dry it on a certain temperatures, so we have a different kinds of molds for different kinds of beer. Uh, for example, for a normal uh, gold color beer, 12 degrees, we use Czech malt, which is dried on 80 degrees. Uh, for dark beers, we use roasted malt, which is dried on 200 degrees. So it has kind of a dark color, that's why the beer is dark. The 80 degrees Czech malt uh, is gold colored. So uh, so we mill the malt and we mix it with the water. The mixture is called mesh. That's why we call it the first process meshing. So we have uh, our mesh here. We take one third of the mesh, we pour it into the mesh kettle, we boil it there, then we pour it back, take another third, boil it, take it back. Uh, the reason for meshing is that in malt there's starch or polysaccharide. And we need uh, to transform it into, into a simple sugar, into glucose. So uh, the enzymes in malt uh, at the temperature of 78 degrees transform uh, starch into, into, into glucose. And so yeast, the microorganisms, can create alcohol later. From, uh, from a normal malt, from uh, starch, they couldn't create uh, alcohol, so that's why we are doing this. Yeah, that's why we are doing meshing. Uh, meshing lasts for about five hours. Then the beer goes into the second part, into filtration. There's a lot of dirt inside the mesh, and it creates kind of a layer at the bottom of this tank. And uh, and it's the beer is filtrated through that layer uh, for about 3.5 hours. And then uh, it's filtrated into this wort kettle where the cones are added. And it's boiled with them for another 90 minutes. Then the cones are separated and the beer is cooled on 13 degrees and it goes to the fermentation. But fermentation uh, is not happening inside this building. Uh, we will go there later. Only this, uh, this is happening inside the building. Yeah. The smell here is very different, it's like uh, this, is, this is the place where they are mashing the uh, barley and it has a very, very unique smell. Mm. So Budweiser for whole world is being made here. And it doesn't seem so huge, but yeah, it is. We are now in the fermentation tanks, and it's cold here. It's kind of very cool, very different from the mashing tanks. time when we will have fresh beer from the tanks. So we are going to have beer from the tanks. Yeah, yeah I think this is the best part. <laughs>
the dark beer has a really, really caramel taste, so you can taste it if you want. And in the middle, it's a dry, dry house. Caramel bond. Yeah. I don't feel the difference, but it's nice. Yeah, no, I don't feel the caramel, but I feel the dark taste, which generally comes from the dark beers like Kozil Dark or Budweiser Dark. It's nice. So now I'm going to have uh, original Budweiser from the tank. Let's see how it is. Good. Uh, so this beer, uh, one day it will be normal, well, it will disappear, but now it's not fermented, uh, it's not pasteurized or filtrated, it's so uh, it's still the raw, the raw beer, it's uh, still inside, it's still fermented. I think it's, it's a little bit stronger than the normal beer. Uh, this one here is from the 7th of January, so uh, it's over three months now. So this is the like uh, assembly chain where the uh, yeah, make this bottles is for filling for filling bottles, bottles. but it's, it's it's holiday and it's also weekend here so it's a, it's a running today. Mm. So if in not a normal day if someone comes yeah from can, Monday to Friday you, uh, you can you can see you can see you it, can see the bottle okay. So I had a very nice tour in the Budweiser factory and now I have a, tray, a bus in one hour to Prague so I think I should keep walking because it's like 3 kilometers from here the bus station and then uh, yeah let's see what happens in Prague.